Hey, I'm Cristino Grego. As a chef and a lifelong foodie, I know the joy of a really amazing meal. I believe everyone should have delicious food in their lives. That's why I want to show you how to bring fine dining home. My goal is to demystify high-end dining, one delicious dish at a time. Today I'm heading to Fruition, a tiny restaurant with a very big reputation. The idea that I had when we opened this restaurant was to be able to provide a place where we could entertain our guests as we would at home. Opened in 2007 by Chef Alex Seidel, Fruition only has 50 seats and they're always full. Stop in without a reservation and it'll take an act of God to get in. One bite of his food is all it takes to understand what the fuss is about. Call our food sophisticated comfort food. It's necessarily American comfort food. Uh, we do a little play on a Spanish dish uh, with escabeche and tuna, uh, chicken and dumpling soup, oyster Rockefeller, um, so some of the classics that you're familiar with. Alex was named one of the top 10 up and coming chefs in America by Food and Wine Magazine. And today I'm gonna find out how he creates a little bit of heaven on a plate. Alex, how you doing? Yeah, Thanks, welcome. buddy. Thanks I appreciate it. Down. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Ready to have some food? I am. Come join us. Thanks, bud. How long have you been doing this, and, and basically why do you do this as the, as the chef? Um, I started at the bottom as a dishwasher when I was 14 years old, and I've continued to work my way up. And, uh, you know, I think it's just, again, going back to the craftsmanship and uh, just learning and continually pushing yourself uh, to get better. I think that's it's just human nature. Today I want you to try one of our signature dishes, it's the pasta carbonara. Uh, been on our menu since day one and uh, one of our top selling dishes. Looks delicious, brother. Yeah, let's, let's try it. What makes this a little different than, say, the bacon and egg and cream sauce that some people are used to in this country? You know, a lot of people uh, have had carbonara with cream sauce. It's completely bastardized from the <laughs> Roman version. I think a lot of home cooks don't understand that less is more and what we try to do here is really highlight the ingredient so really when we talk about simplicity what you're showing me here is peas pork egg pasta made from egg four ingredients maybe five ingredients absolutely wonderful not a bad thing about this dish my question for you now my friend are you going to share the secrets of this dish with me yeah let's go make it Alex is gonna show me how to make this recipe in his kitchen. And when we come back, I'm gonna show you how to make it in yours. Luckily, Alex Seidel has shared with me the secrets to his amazing pasta carbonara. Now, pasta carbonara, traditionally a Roman dish, is made with egg, noodles, and pancetta. But of course, Alex elevates this to a whole new level. And the secret to this dish is it all starts with the pork belly. It's a long process, but this is what makes it different from other places. First starts off with a 24-hour cure of brown sugar, salt, carrots, celery, and parsley. Wrap that in cheesecloth, then wrap it in plastic wrap, put it on a plate, put it in your fridge, and forget about it for 24 hours. Once that 24 hours is up, pull it out and wash all that cure off. Now it's ready to go into its milk bath. And what I have over here stovetop is the pork in milk, a little bit of onions, and it's been cooked slowly for six hours on low heat. That's finishing up. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to turn to making our pasta. The recipe that we have is very simple. Three ingredients. We have just regular flour, semolina, and we're gonna use a fresh egg from Alex's farm, Verde Farms. We get a little bit of flour on there. I eyeball it. The ratio is about three quarters cup to one egg, one large egg. Add a little bit of semolina for texture. It's a wonderful texture, that ground corn. Then simply put, all you do is you just make a nice little well right in the middle of that and crack your egg right in. Just grab a fork and you're just gonna wanna whisk that right into the middle of that well. This is where we start to get our hands dirty. Put this in the fridge for about 20 minutes, 15, 20 minutes, let it rest while you clean up your workstation and everything here. And then we'll go get the dough and be ready to roll out. 
So it's been about 15, 20 minutes resting in the fridge. All we gotta do is just flour our board, flour the dough, and we're ready to go. So what we do here is I just wanna take a small piece of this dough, and I just really just wanna kinda get it going. Get it going with my hands. I wanna get it to a nice, almost like wood spoon thickness. All right, we're getting there. Isn't it funny when you watch the Italian women in Italy, the little old ladies, their hands so wrinkled, they just do this so effortlessly. All right, what I do is I just take my knife. We'll start with a little bit of cavatelli, and all I'm doing is I'm just gonna get that fork, I'm just gonna roll that right off of there, and you can see those beautiful ridges on the cavatelli. And those little grooves are there just to hold that wonderful little sauce that we're gonna have on this carbonata. All right, so we're finished up with our cavatelli that we're gonna be using in the dish. And what we're gonna do now is we're gonna do a little technique for a six minute egg that Alex uses in his restaurant. Basically what I do is I take my little sake cup, I get a couple of pieces of uh, pre-cut plastic wrap, just kind of line that cup right there. I get one of those farm fresh eggs, crack that right into the little cup, perfect fit. And what we do is we kind of take that up and we fold it into its own wonderful little packet. What I do is I just take some standard kitchen string. What we have here is a wonderful little packet that you can submerge in the water as you're boiling your cavatelli. Both bean fresh cavatelli should take about five to six minutes and the egg should take about five to six minutes as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come right over to our pork belly that's been braising for that six hours. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull out that pork belly and cut off a nice chunk that we're gonna be searing off. Now mind you, this has been going low and slow for hours. So be very gentle with the meat because this guy is, is ready to come apart. What we have here is the pork belly that now we're gonna sear. So we're gonna get some nice color added to it. It's been poaching in milk, it's nice, it's creamy. All of that flavor is infused into that meat. Now, as that's going, I know that this is gonna take about five to six minutes, so timing is everything. I'm gonna go ahead and add my cavatelli, and I'm gonna add my egg right into the water. We'll let that go, and I know that when the meat's done, the cavatelli will be perfectly cooked. Now, the pork belly's already cured, it's already poached, it's cooked. Right now, we're just getting some texture to it. We're just giving it that nice crunch so that when you cut through it, you hit that texture, and then you hit that nice creaminess inside. I'm just gonna take it out, let it rest a second. To this, I'm gonna add a nice little handful of some sweet peas in there and a little bit of our Parmesan broth. What this is, is this is a reduced chicken stock with the rinds of Parmesan cheese added to it. Nothing else, just nice chicken stock and nice Parmesan rinds. So now that we have that going, we're gonna let that reduce just a little bit. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add that pork belly right back into that broth just to get some of that flavor in there. And now we're ready to assemble. Grab that wonderful piece of pork belly. And what I do is I flip it right upside down so you see that wonderful dark skin that it's formed there. You get your cavatelli, spread that around. Get your broth. You can see how it's just thick and nicely. A few of those peas. And now we get that perfectly poached egg and we lay that right on top. The final touch to this dish is the wonderful pea shoots that we picked over in Alex's garden. And what I do is I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of truffle oil, just a couple of drops, just to dress it. Some nice sea salt. As you cut through these pea shoots into the egg, into the carbonata, into the pork belly, you're gonna get a little bit of that truffle flavor. So there you have it. Alex Seidel's perfect pasta carbonata.